Sarah's second restaurant, aptly named The Wine Rack, is being fitted out as an intimate and stylish inner city hotspot in one of Mumbai's upmarket shopping districts. Mumbai has a thriving foodie scene packed with great restaurants, so there's a lot of pressure to deliver a menu that satisfies the city's more discerning customers. I was definitely thinking that Mumbai was going to be a lot easier than Goa because Goa is away from the main city, there's a lot of infrastructure issues, but here in Mumbai there's just a whole different set of issues, you know. Now we're just struggling to get permission from the mall to put the gas in, so gas hasn't gone in and um, yeah, just another day setback. You know, I just want to get in there and get cooking and deliver the best possible menu, but it's hard when things keep getting pushed back. We're meant to have media previews tomorrow and we're having Vogue magazine come in to try out our menu and review us, but we've not even cooked in this kitchen once. We haven't trained any of the staff, so it's pretty impossible for him and Elle and I to pull off the menu with only the two of us knowing the dishes. So yeah, I think it's best that we just postpone this. It's not a forgiving market and it's my reputation. So if we send out, you know, wrong dishes or, you know, things aren't finished, then it's detrimental, not only to me and my brand, but the restaurant as well. So it's just not something that I'm, you know, willing to risk right now. Sarah has not had the time to train the kitchen team or build a relationship with new head chef Himanul. With the tiny kitchen still filled with tradespeople, Himanul suggests a trip to the market to show Sarah where the restaurant will be sourcing much of their fresh produce. Crawford Market is South Mumbai's biggest market and it's especially known for its bountiful range of fruit and vegetables. I just don't want to waste this time, you know, we're here and I'd like to keep growing the menu and trialling new dishes. So I'm looking forward to finding out what's available and exploring. It always kind of gets your creativity flowing. We need to use all these things. They look yeah. so good. Yeah. Actually, I'll give you enter the market from here. <laughs> Yellow curry paste and Madras curry powder. Let's pick up that first. Homemade Madras curry powder. Nice. Just like the real deal. Right? Yeah. Okay. It's awesome walking around the Crawford Market with him and Elle. He's a local, you know, he knows the shop owners, he knows all the ingredients, so it's just such an asset having him part of the team. He's so inspired by food and, you know, we can talk about food for hours on end and I can see the passion just oozing out of him. So we can bounce ideas off of each other and he adds to it. This is called the Dehraduni Basmati. Dehraduni. Dehraduni. It's, it's from my hometown. Yeah, it's considered as one of the best rice in the world. Long grain, and once you cook them, each grain separates out beautifully. Perfect. Looks really good. Let's get some. Yeah? Yeah. Let's try it, the nasi goreng with yeah. this one, yeah? With the restaurant kitchen still not accessible, Sarah and Himanol have resorted to Himanol's small apartment kitchen to test recipes. We've got a nasi goreng on the menu, but we're just going to trial a vegetarian version of it. And there's so many vegetarians in India, and we need some really tasty, wholesome, filling dishes on the menu. So we're going to marinate some paneer, so they're little cottage cheese steaks and we're making our vegetarian version of prawn crackers. Homemade. Homemade, yeah. The garlic and ginger. I think this dish is great because it's so flavoursome. And, you know, I think that was the biggest thing that 
I had to learn with Antares is how much flavor everything needs to have in Australia. We would love just to have a piece of steak, salt and pepper on the grill, mm -hmm. and it's like heaven for us. <laughs> you are in the country of spices. <laughs> we live for flavor. A little bit of chili paste, or a lot. <laughs> and a little bit of salt. So, in with a bit of curry paste. So this is forming the base for the rice and a little bit of vegetable stock. Let's pop a little bit of water in there. Can you believe that we've got hundreds of thousands of dollars of equipment and this is our setup? Chop me some spring onions as yeah, well. Sure. Has a chopping board there. <laughs> we <laughs> probably have like 14 in the kitchen. <laughs> no chopping board. <laughs> Mineral human pepper mill. Yep. That actually rhymes. <laughs> your best Australian impersonation. I need my nose to be blocked a little more. Oh, I sound nasally. All of you do. Oh, really? <laughs> nasally? Yeah, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, you sound like bob heads. Okay. Huh. That's, huh. that's generalization. Huh. Have you ever met anyone in India sounding like, okay? No, never. Yeah. Stand-up comedies. Yeah. Okay. Well, we don't talk like that. Taste the creation? Yep, let's dig in. Mm. Mm. I think that's the best cottage cheese I've ever eaten. Yeah. <laughs> it's so tasty. Um, Try it with the cracker. Oh, good. Yeah? Mm -hmm. We love brunch. Mm. We Indians. Flavour, textures, a little bit of spice. The right kind of spice. Yeah, it's delicious. Mm. One dish down for the menu. <laughs> and without a kitchen. Yeah, one out of 90. <laughs> Hopefully the gas goes in so we can power through all of the dishes. And at lightning speed. <laughs>
The gas is in. I don't know that. It's not. You, yeah. I don't know that. I can check everywhere. Okay. But All right. Not. Cool. Alrighty. Well, I'm not far. I'm coming. You need time to get into the kitchen and you know try all the dishes in your new environment and test the equipment and. Ah! ah! <laughs> This is what anxiety is made of. Mumbai traffic and bombs being dropped at the last minute. We're pretty nervous about it. How's it going? Oh, well. So, we're, what do you mean we're starting tomorrow? Look at them, they're already wearing uniforms. Yeah, yeah. Joy! Hundred percent. We don't have a kitchen. We have the kitchen. <laughs> have a look at the kitchen. We have the kitchen. You know us, we'll get it ready. We'll get it ready, Sarah. All set. <laughs> so, yeah, it's really happening. <laughs> we're starting tomorrow. First media is coming in. I mean, you never really 100% feel ready, but we haven't tested out the kitchen yet and started cooking together as a team, so it's always going to be a little bit nerve-wracking. <laughs> In uniforms have arrived, so we're going to look good. <laughs> but <laughs> I would have definitely liked to have trained everyone a little bit longer. <laughs> it's basically training on the job again. <laughs> oh. Hi, everyone. Just preparing for uh, tomorrow's first dinner. <laughs> Crazy. There are no taps, there's no water in the kitchen. Oh. Uh, so no no water, no oven. So no slow, slow cooking. No cooking. But the, the gas, gas is not in. Tomorrow morning probably we'll get the gas. So what's the plan then? We'll start off with uh, 10 dishes. Yeah. I don't think all 10 are possible tomorrow. No. I'll be honest. We want to do the karate roti. Yeah. So that's in, karate roti is in. Not really, no. No? The equipment isn't installed yet. Okay. There's a massive dinner tomorrow for the first preview with Vogue. And the place isn't ready. We'll figure out in 24 hours how to, how to spruce things up and make it look pretty. The bigger issue is that mall hasn't given us a gas connection because the fire detection system is not here. Although it's just an hour's job, the guy who's supposed to get and install the fire detection system, he's getting it from Delhi and he missed his flight. This guy is supposedly coming in at 1.30 in the morning uh, and hopefully we'll have fire running by 3, 4, so the sh kitchen team, the chefs, everyone's going to be working all night. There is no plan B. The only plan B is to get this damn thing to work, which is why the chefs are on standby 3 in the morning to start preparations, to start trials um, once the fire kicks on at 2 in the morning. <laughs> I'll, I'll drink a big whiskey tonight, <laughs> that's for sure. But we got to fight to make it happen. We've got under 24 hours to, to get everything from ingredients, plating, kitchen, trials, uh, from scratch. Mumbai is extremely intense and it's very different to anywhere I've been before so I'm going to have to get used to it. I'm from a town that has 1,000 people in it so going from 1,000 to 24 million is a pretty big change. You have to be really switched on. Everything that you're doing throughout the day you really have to concentrate. It's like all the elements kind of coming at you at once. So you can't really ever let your guard down so you know you're managing living in another country and the different cultures and you know different area I've never lived in this space before never really spent that much time in Mumbai and you know again building a restaurant but it's different challenges to before and this time you know I'm putting so much emphasis on making an amazing menu but being unprepared is not really a great thing my reputation as a chef is on the line because I want to put my best foot forward 
and pull off an amazing dinner, but I'm concerned because, you know, the kitchen's just not ready. Excuse me. Excuse me. Hi. Hi, Sarah. I've got some bad news. Um, we can't do Vogue tonight. Why is that? It's cancelled. We don't have a license, which is the showstopper. Oh. It's a big mess. It's a big mess. Uh, we've sent out 400 invites. We've got to figure out what to do. Um, and we can't demotivate the staff, so it's got to stay between us for now till we figure out a strategy. But um, it's a big mess. So we can't do tonight at all? You know, we can serve food, but it's the wine rack without, a wi without wine. No other words, we're f***ed right now. Like, when are we even going to open? There was no plan B, right? So, so we need 10 minutes of, of a triple shot espresso to figure out what to do. And it's so much money down the drain because it's a month of rentals, a month of uh, salaries, a month of operations. The kitchen is full of food and we can't serve. So crazy. We've cancelled 300 people. We have f***ed in every other way, but... The only silver lining is we get time to get it right. Yeah. yeah. The bureaucratic process in Mumbai can be slow at times, and working to a schedule can be almost impossible. Not only has this caused delays in the gas connection, but it now appears that the restaurant's alcohol licence has been held up in its final approval due to an unlucky accident with the person who issues it. I only just found out 24 hours ago that this was going to happen. And then now, I've just been told it's cancelled. <laughs> I mean, think about the emotions that I'm going through. It's so crazy. All the invites have gone out and we were set for events every day from today until the launch. And now we just have to go back on all of that and change everything and not being able to open up for who knows how long. Not having any definitive date of when their licence is coming. You know, it's called the Wine Rack. It's a wine-based restaurant and the menu is based around dishes that complement wine. So it kind of throws the whole concept out of whack, doesn't it? If you ask a shish, probably 2,000 people are invited to the launch, but hundreds for sure. And that's all going to have to change now. And it's um, damage control, basically. As exciting as this all is, it can be extremely overwhelming and it's days like this where, you know, it feels like one step forward, two steps back. <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's tough. At this point, it's hard to see the day when it's gonna be running smoothly and, you know, everything's gonna be up and people coming through the door. There's so much pressure coming from every angle and, yeah, it's, it feels really hard some days and it builds up and I think you crack a little bit. <laughs> and then, you know, I definitely feel the pressure to a level where it's hard to get through. And I know that everything will be okay and it'll work out in the end, but to get to that point is, is hard. For me, the best thing that I can do is just try and break things down and tackle one thing at a time and just focus on a simple task rather than looking at the whole big picture of, you know, the fact that there's so many things to do in the restaurant before opening day. And you obviously want it to be amazing, but yeah, it's hard to see that day. such an exhausting day and now that Vogue's cancelled I just want to head home and just get over all of that but I haven't eaten all day so I just want to stop off at this delicious street food stall it's called Butamaya. I've just heard from so many people that this is the place to go to they sell these delicious kebabs they've got tikka rolls and as you can see there's so much energy there and I'm just so excited to get over there and try some out 
Uh, can I get a um, tikka roll? Yeah, medium spicy, yeah. <laughs> what other dishes do you have? Veda roti. That's the like, one you're famous for, right? The flat one. Maybe I'll try that one as well. <laughs> It's a little bit spicy. There's some tamarind chutney sauce here that's a little bit tangy and it's just such a beautiful texture as well. It's a like a folded up roti with this beautiful mince inside. It's delicious. <laughs> I was a bit of a moti and I ordered two things. <laughs> so this is actually a tikka roll. <laughs> This is like a souped up kebab that you get back in Australia after a big night out. But it's just so delicious because they've cooked the meat over the flame. So it's got that smoky flavor on the meat. So it's a sea kebab wrapped in a roti. It's just such a delicious flavor. You know, it's so nice to be out here and trying different things around Mumbai. It's, this is what I live for, you know? It's, inspiring me and I can definitely visualize how I'm going to start using this and incorporating something like this into the menu. I can actually see the light at the end of the tunnel and I can feel that we're going to be able to pump out all of these dishes and the restaurant starting to take shape but yeah I feel like <laughs> pretty exhausted right now. gas and can't get into the kitchen and secondly we don't have a liquor license and we're called the wine rack so we can't open without serving wine. I don't know when the launch is going to be now. It's uh, it's crazy because sometimes you just feel like screaming <laughs> because you know you're just trying to hold in all these emotions that when you're the boss you have to maintain a calm face and positivity but inside there's so many things going wrong and it's definitely hard to stay positive. Despite the chaos and furious energy of life in Mumbai, the people are highly spiritual and time will always be taken to respect the traditions. Sarah's business partners have decided to perform a puja ceremony with hopes of turning their bad luck around. When I first landed in India, I have to say I felt a certain energy when I got here and along the way I've started to embrace more and more of their traditions and their culture and I love it because there's nothing more beautiful than everyone getting around and putting out positive energy and blessing the restaurant. A puja ceremony is to ward off any of those mistakes that you might have made and burn them in the fire and just get started with the positive energy. <laughs> is that good? Does that work? <laughs> Next question. <laughs> felt a lot more prepared this time round and you know I've spent a lot of time on the menu and I have a lot more knowledge than the first time round and I felt excited that we were going to be quite prepared to start this time but again you know it's to the wire and we're really pressed for time and yeah it's pretty frustrating because the prep was there. Kitchen um, equipment is all in place, but we still don't have any gas. It was meant to go in last night at 2 a.m., but that's still not happened, so um, that's taking time, and that's what we need <laughs> to get started. Uh, it's expected to go in in the next couple of hours, but yeah, I said that four days ago, so. <laughs> we have no walk in <laughs> yet. Uh, used for a bit of storage at the moment. <laughs> it's hard to believe that 
today we're going to start cooking. I definitely feel the pressure of it, but it's different to Antares because I guess I've done it before and I expect these things to happen a little bit more now. So I don't get as shocked <laughs> when I find out. But all of these things that happen are uh, just completely out of my control. While the restaurant and kitchen are still not operational, the restaurant owners are already incurring massive rental and fit-out costs. So delaying the launch is not an option they are willing to entertain. It's really been baptism by fire because she has been through this kind of pressure before. But trust me, it never gets easy. We did a fair set of trials and we've done a fair set of work outside in Delhi, Goa, but never in the restaurant. So we don't even know if the equipment's working. We don't know if the exhaust is working. It all comes down to the complete package. It's not just one element, it's not the food, it's not the drinks, it's not the ambience, it's everything coming together. And now it just throws everything out of whack. I mean, the good thing is I'm just gonna be refining the menu now and getting out there, getting more inspiration from Mumbai itself, you know, developing the menu, making it so solid and strong that, you know, we are gonna give a solid menu. While Mumbai is known as India's premier destination for upmarket dining, Sarah prefers to find inspiration on the streets. Mumbaikers are really passionate about their food and what they like, so I want to make sure that I explore the city and get to know all of that and take it back to the restaurant because it's very different to the palate of Australians. What is unique about street food in Mumbai is that it's popular amongst all economic classes. And it's common to find long lines of diverse patrons queuing on street corners at all hours of the day and night. This is Mumbai's peak season, and every day the wine rack delays opening, the staff lose the opportunity to earn tips, and Sarah risks them being poached by one of the many established restaurants in the area. We currently haven't got any gas in the kitchen. We don't have a liquor license, but you have to maintain the positivity throughout the staff and to keep everyone's motivation high and spirits up because it's about keeping that momentum. Floors have just been polished in the restaurant. Uh, great news, it means we're one step closer to having a functioning set up restaurant. But in the meantime, it means that this is my entrance to the kitchen. <laughs> one of the most important things is to build the culture in the staff from day one because, you know, it sets the tone for the restaurant, it sets the tone for the work ethic, for the drive and for the positivity and you know it's the toughest time in the beginning but also it's the greatest time because all the staff that are here at this time become part of the family and part of the soul that helped build the place so it's key for us to all keep that energy, keep the positivity and to start on the right foot. While the restaurant kitchen is yet to be fired up and the final touches in the restaurant fit-out are still being completed, the cost of rent and staff are quickly adding up. It really does not look like a finished place. The menu's not done, the place is not ready. So we should have opened about uh, 15 days back and uh, we were absolutely ready for it, at least in our heads. We could have uh, done a lot of setup work today, but that wouldn't happen because the floor has been polished and no one can enter the restaurant for uh, at least till tomorrow morning. So that's an entire day wasted. But we utilized it for some kind of staff training. We had some wine tastings and um, basically trying to utilize every single minute that we have, you know, to get this launch right. No update as of yet with the liquor license. So I guess in our heads, we need to just be thinking that, yes, it's going to happen and just, you know, powering through to the finish line and trying to get everything um, as ready as possible before then. Since the wine rack kitchen still isn't functional, Sarah has decided to drown her sorrows in sugary sweet treats. Located in South Mumbai, Muhammad Ali Road is known as the street that never sleeps. I've been told a bunch of times that I must come to Muhammad Ali Road for the sweets. And I'm glad I made it here. I'm looking for this one shop to try Aflatoon. So hopefully I find it. It's so chaotic here. It's not even one of the busiest nights, but I can barely hear myself think. But I'm excited. I'm going to try and find this place. 
Aflatoon is an Indian sweet treat made with mawa, an Indian cheese made from reduced milk, eggs, sugar, semolina and ghee. Soft and mellow in flavour, it's often topped with nuts and dried fruit. Do you have aflatoon? Aflatoon. 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 This is good. Can I taste them? Dry fruit. This is different. Dry fruit. Dry fruit. <laughs> this is good right now. Yeah. Have fun. Too. <laughs> You're laughing at me. <laughs> That aflatoon is amazing. It's a soft kind of flavor. It's not overly sweet. Like some desserts can be extremely sweet. This is perfect. It's so delicious. Can I get some? I definitely have a sweet tooth. <laughs> I love exploring uh, all these little spots in India and finding new sweets to try. And There's a few Indian sweets that I'm obsessed with, like Gulab Jamun, but there's some of them it's taken me a little bit of time to get used to the flavour and texture of them because they're just very different to the types of sweets that we have in Australia. So it definitely took me a little bit of time, but now I love all of them. <laughs> I've just got back from Muhammad Ali Road and I, to be honest, feel a little bit buzzed from all the sugar that I've eaten. Like, I should be sleeping, but I just feel like I want to start cooking. The kitchen's still not in, gas is not linked up, the license isn't in place, but ultimately we're going to be opening as soon as it is. So this is a dish that I actually really want to put on the menu. This is beetle leaf, which generally in India is only ever eaten as pan. So I wanted to try and create a dish that used the leaves in a different way. So I'm making a ran kolapuri, which is a spiced lamb dish with coconut. It's a Maharashtrian dish, so I'm trying that out today. Served atop the betel leaf and a little bit of avocado reta to freshen it up. First up, I'm going to temper some aromatic Indian spices. So. I've got some cloves, some cinnamon, and some cardamom. So I'm using mustard oil for this dish. It just adds a whole nother layer of flavor to the dish. And for the spices, I'm using more aromatic, lighter, fragrant spices. And just heat that up to temper the spices. So you just want the natural oils to release. And you know it once it's ready, it starts to smell very fragrant and aromatic. I'm now going to pop in the onion, garlic, ginger paste and the onions. If you need, you can add a little bit of water at this stage to make sure that it doesn't burn. And then also I'm adding in a little bit of tomato puree. Now I slow cooked this lamb shoulder yesterday. I just basically did it with some garlic ginger paste and a little bit of garam masala and slow cooked it for about six hours till it's nice and tender. So now I'm gonna pop it into the sauce that I've just made. So all those flavors are molding together now and it's flavoring the meat and it's all just cooking out. You don't want any of those spices to be raw. Uh, you want the tomato to be cooked out nicely as well. I wanted to add dishes to the menu that pay homage to the state and actually also show people that these robust flavors do go really nicely with the red wine. The coconut milk just balances the dish. It adds a fresher element, makes it a little bit more creamy. Yeah, it just really adds to the flavor.
I did not think I was going to be sitting here on the couch at home on my own menu testing. It's pretty crazy. You know, I've flown to Mumbai to open up a restaurant and the kitchen's still not in and it's really frustrating. But at least I got a good dish out. I'm pretty happy with that one. Mm. That tastes so good. I think it's going to do well. To the kitchen, it's the place where I actually feel the most calm, you know, when we have a functioning kitchen and you can just zone out and just focus on the food and it takes you away from all the other stresses, you know, when you're cooking and starting to make progress, it just is a great feeling. When I first walked into the kitchen today, I thought it was going to be like pumping and you know everyone's ready to <laughs> start cooking but it's still a long way from that. It's starting to get more and more stressful now because it is very close to the launch but you know when you're doing testing and, and training in these conditions something that might take you half a day ends up taking you two days so it's really hard to make progress and especially when there's a short timeline. Basically, I'm just going to clear a little space in the kitchen and leave the chaos around me because you can't tackle too much at once. After the initial delays, the restaurant launch is now scheduled to happen in four days' time. Today is the first opportunity for Sarah and head chef Himanol to start training the team on the new menu. We have around three and a half, four days to cover approximately 95 dishes. So that's almost 25 dishes a day. But the kitchen team has no idea what the menu is. And that's going to be the biggest challenge training them. When you open up a restaurant this magnitude, there are a lot of things that you need to keep in mind. A lot of nitty gritty details that need to be taken into account. And it does take time. It does. I mean, we've turned this around in three months. I think that's record time for anybody in this area. The kitchen is far from perfect and there's a lot to be organised and arranged and still things to be fixed, <laughs> but it feels great just to get started and, you know, to cook the first dish in the kitchen is a great feeling. So this is my ice nougat and we're going to put a little bit of a spin on it today. Uh, so I'm just going to teach Himanel how to make the ice nougat. <laughs> Ready? Yes, I am. <laughs> Let's do it. So about 100 grams of sugar, 140 glucose. And then you just need water mm -hmm. to kind of make it into a bit of a slurry so it doesn't burn. And so while that's cooking, I just need to get the eggs on. What the hell is wrong with this <laughs> New equipment and we don't know how to use it. <laughs> Why? It's, it's, a, it's pretty simple, right? Timer and start. Start? Stop. And it's not happening. <laughs> Read owner's manual before operating. <laughs> it's definitely day one in the kitchen. <laughs> There's always something. <laughs> Just swapping it over for my green machine. <laughs> These need to be finely chopped because I'm going to mix it through the whole batter and you want just little pops of flavour and crunch throughout the dish, not really big chunky ones. See, it's really stiff. You can, like, hold it yeah. above your head. <laughs> the orange zest just gives it a little bit of punch of flavour and if you like, you can add a little bit of Grand Marnier as well give a little bit more of that orangey flavour. Sarah's menu will feature both Asian and classic European themes. For some of the chefs, this is a new style of cooking that they will need to adapt to very quickly. My ice nougat needs set for six hours, so while that's in, let's make the syrup. Cello, karo. 
Hello, girl. Is that turn it on? <laughs> he asked me if I speak any Hindi, and I said, Tora, Tora. It's like a little bit. <laughs> Learning slowly. So it's super simple. It's just pomegranate juice, red wine, and sugar. And just let that reduce into a syrup. Finally, first dish in the new kitchen. We've christened it. Yeah. <laughs> Feel pumped, boys. Ready to serve like hundreds of people. <laughs> While the nougat sets, the kitchen team get to work organising the kitchen and preparing for the busy days to come. This kitchen has never been used, so there's literally hundreds of processes that still need to be put in place in order to deliver high quality food under the time pressures of commercial service. It's a little bit melted because the freezer was left open. That's all right. It'll taste the same. Mm. Mm. The orange zest? Yeah. And the texture of the nuts? Mm. And a little bit of cinnamon in the red wine pomegranate mm -hmm. syrup. Tastes awesome. I feel so pumped. It's incredible the energy that you get inside <laughs> when you're just able to start cooking. You know, it's my passion, this is what I love doing. And it makes it all feel that little bit more real and like it's happening. I feel the kind of butterflies inside and I'm just so excited to have started. It feels amazing. I feel so I thought that was falling on me. <laughs> it was just, oh, he was just moving it, it's okay. <laughs> As work on the wine rack continues around the clock, Progress needs to be accelerated in all areas of the restaurant in order to be ready for the launch in just four days. After a big day, Sarah heads home to prepare for training the staff on the remaining 94 dishes. It's such a good feeling to be able to cook in the kitchen. You know, it's the day that I've been waiting for. You know, I just felt like this day was never going to come and that I was never going to get into the kitchen and start cooking. It just felt like it kept getting pushed back and now when I like walk into the kitchen, it's just excitement and, you know, this is my comfort zone. So making a bit of a dent on the menu training feels good. But if I look at it as a whole, you know, the fact that we don't have a liquor licence, that we've still got 94 dishes to train on now, it's, yeah, I mean, there's so much work to be done and there's only four days until we open. I feel like the best way to look at this is just to break it down section by section and just focus on what we can change and what we can do in the meantime. And there's always going to be setbacks and there's always going to be things that get in our way, but at least now we can finally start cooking. <laughs> 